I'm sorry that this because the earth is full of water. As a man's making, I will face them from off the earth. Make yourself an ark out of resinous wood. Make it with reeds. And here's the know-it-all priestly narrator. He knows just how the ark is made with resinous wood, pitch inside and out. He knows the length is 300 cubits. He knows its breadth is 50 cubits. He knows its height is 30 cubits. Just like he knows all the times people lived. He knows the dimensions of the ark. He knows it's got three decks. Kind of like to say, was you there, Charlie? You know the ark had three decks? <laughs> well, this guy, this writer knows, and he knows just how big it was and everything. Um, now, let's, this is the best story that one can have for separating out the text and showing how they are spliced together. You're going to have to bear with me. It's really tough to separate the story out, but I will try to do it for you. Now, in the Yahweh's previously, in 6.5, uh, he saw the wickedness and he regretted having made man. Now, in 17, uh, there's a bit here. For my part, I mean to bring a flood and send the waters on the earth to destroy all flesh on every living creature under heaven. Everything on earth will per perish. But I will establish my covenant with you. Scholars say that that hooks up with line 8. That material 17 in line 17. And part of 18. I was out of my covenant and you with you. Uh, and they also say that the second part of 18, and you must go on board the ark, your sons, your wife, your son's wife along with you, hooks up with 16. And what God said to know. You say, well, how do they know this? I don't know how they know this. This is how they separated it out. They've studied it, and um, these are the clues they've come to from the language. It may or may not be, but let's, let's just look at this anyway. From all living creatures, from all flesh, take two of each kind on the ark, male and female, every bird, every kind of animal, every reptile, very wordy, you see. And that's another characteristic of the priestly narrator, not the priestly ceremonial repetitious person, but this E narrator person. Uh, he's very wordy compared to the always. For your part, for yourself, eat it with all kind, lay in stores, uh, serve food, and so on. Noah did this. He did all that God ordered him. We see that's a God text. So from 18 to 22, it's a God text again. Look at 7.1. Yahweh said to Noah, Go aboard the ark, you and all your household. Yahweh's text. They say that should go back to 18. I would establish my covenant with you. You always said to Noah, go aboard the ark. Because you see, it's already said in line 18, and you must go on the ark, you, yourself, and your sons. They will put that back in the priestly. You must go upon the ark, second part of 18 and 19, to the priestly. 7-1, the Yahwist. You and all your household, for you alone are among this generation who I see as a good man in my judgment. Now look at the difference that we know is two different narrative lines because of the next sentence. Of all the clean animals, take seven of each kind, both male and female. And of the unclean animals, take two, a male and its female. Of the birds of heaven, seven of each kind, both male and female to propagate their line over the whole earth. So, maybe if you're a religious person, you just read this with eyes shut and don't see these issues, whether they're problems, I don't know. But the thing is, is that the one line has two by two and that's it. The other line is more complex. Seven of the clean and two of the unclean, and the bird seven of them all. Although how he's going to get all these creatures on this little ark, I haven't got the slightest idea, but that's 
the stuff of children's bedtime stories, and we don't ask questions like that. Anyway, I will rid the earth. He says, anyway, for in seven days' time, he's interested in the number seven. I mean to make it rain on earth for 40, he's interested in the number 40, for 40 days and nights, and I will rid the earth of every living thing that I made. That comes back to here where he said, I regret having made, if I regret line 6, 8, I regret having made them, for they fashion nothing but wickedness all the time. I mean to, then I will rid the earth of every living thing I made, no, it's, a, it's the same vocabulary, and that ends that narrative for the moment. Line six, they say, is back to priestly. No, 600 years old when the flood of waters appeared on the earth. Let's see, where does that hook up with? They say, let's see, that that hooks up with uh, line 22 there. Noah did this. He did all that God had ordered him. If you skip 7, 1 to 5, you haven't skipped anything because it just flows right along. Noah did this. He did all that God ordered him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters appeared on the earth. You don't need the stuff in between. Because, in fact, the editors felt all this material was so important and holy and precious that they didn't want to lose any of it. So, though it destroyed the narrative and made it totally incomprehensible, and the whole narrative is like totally, you know, cut up and it's almost impossible to make any sense out of it because of this splicing that has gone on here. And, you know, from the two different text lines, you can see where basically the text lines have come in. Anyway, line seven, back to the always. Let's skip line six. Noah did all that Yahweh ordered, line five. Noah, when the sons and his wife and the sons' wives boarded the ark to escape, you, you don't need line six. The always just continues right up. So, Noah with his wife, sons, wife, boarded the ark, escaped the waters of the flood. Uh, again, of the clean animals that are not clean, of the birds, uh, two, male and female, that's uh, interspersed, part of eight and nine, from the Aloist. Let's go back then on line 10 to the always. Skip that material in part of 8 and 9. So, Noah, sons and wives, bought the ark to escape the flood. 